Are you tired of losing in Super Doomspire Brick Battle every single round? Losing in sparring and sword battles? Aiming your rocket, but it just isn't enough. Trying to do a bomb jump, but ultimately failing in the end. Well folks, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly and correctly utilize your entire tool list and how to use it in the most effective manner. We'll be going through the entire basic tools that you are given as a starter set. So players, welcome back to a player's guide to Super Doom Spire. Let's get started in our latest episode, episode 2. Yo, what's up, hashtag nerd squad, and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another player's guide in which we guide you, the player, into getting better scores and better results in games. And today's game is going to be Super Doom Spire. In order to go through Super Doom Spire, we are going to go through each tool one by one. Starting with the classic launcher, moving on to the classic sword, the classic ball, the super ball, and finally the trust. We'll also be going over tips and tricks into winning the game by defeating other players. Let's get started with our first item, the classic launcher. To use a rocket, equip it first. See? Classic launcher. Now what you can do is you can left click on PC or you can tap on mobile to activate it. Rockets are most effective when used on trusses or buildings, especially on windows. Rockets are a good system to also get rid of the support system in a building, which can ultimately get rid of it. Rockets can also be aimed at people, making for a one-hit KO if you aim it just around right. Try and aim your crosshair towards the center of the body or towards the head, as that is usually where a correct aim will stand. Despite the long reroll time and the vulnerability, they can be very effective when knocking out the bottom of a weapon's base. Often what you can do in a base is aim towards the bottom to try and topple it over almost like Jenga. During this reload time, however, you will be extremely vulnerable, so try and hide behind a piece of debris to cover yourself. Rockets are very effective weapons in close-up combat. When aiming, try and jump as seen here, and then try and aim for your player using the tip that I stated before. To aim with the rocket, it may help you to also go in first person for a more accurate aim as shown in the clip here. Rockets are very effective paired with bombs. In the strategy I will use, it is effective to use them to take out spawn points, which are crucial in winning the game. It is also effective up close as I stated before. What you want to do is you want to go down the base and take out the layers one by one until the tower effectively becomes none. You can also take out players on your way. Finally, let's review the pros and cons of using a rocket as shown in the next slide. The pros of using a rocket, it's good for close up range, a jangle like method, and it's good for accuracy. The cons of using a rocket include somewhat bad for far aim, bad for reload times, and bad for vulnerability in reload times. So is it a good weapon? I think it is a medium good weapon. On to our next slide. The sword is probably the most significant weapon in game which provides for good close range combat and jousting. To use a sword in combat, simply left click to simply slice using the sword. To lunge, press R. To lunge on mobile, press lunge. To double jump, you can click while jumping. And to double jump, you can also tap while jumping. Swords are most effective in close range combat and for movement quicker using lunging. Swords are also effective using lunging if you wish to glide to a surface. Using lunging, you can also pierce through an enemy as shown here. A tip when first starting out in the beginning of battle is to dodge other attacks such as Super Ball using the lunge feature on the sword. Swords are also useful for planning a blitz attack with other players, and they are especially very good in numbers. However, swords are not very effective for long range combat, as the lunge feature simply does not work when dealing with long range opponents. Lunge can also be used to effectively knock out opponents in two shots, making it for a good pull-out weapon if you need something quick. It is also good for gliding as seen in this slide. The pros of using a sword is that it's good for a quick pull weapon, jousting is a very effective use, double jump helps the glide, and jousting is good for parkour. 
The cons of using a sword includes that it's horrible for long range combat, middle range is harder to learn, it's not good for strategic takeover, and it cannot take down buildings. So what's my overall opinion on the sword? I think it's good for a quick switch weapon, but you should not rely on the sword to win on the game. A bomb is one of the most effective tools to instantate a takeover. To place a bomb, simply left or right click or on mobile you can tap. Also get out of harm's way, as this could explode or maybe hurt you. A bomb is most effective when used as placed on trusses and on buildings. It is most effective in using to destroy a building, however with sticky bombs you can also place them on players, making for them a very effective weapon. Bombs and rockets are probably the best tools for takeovers as they allow for a building to be destroyed which effectively makes the spawns destroyed. With bombs, you can also jump higher in a thing called a bomb jump. To bomb jump, place down your bomb, stand on top of it, and jump more. This will cause you to jump even higher. Isn't that a neat trick? While using a bomb, remember that you are very vulnerable, so try and use a different weapon if someone is near you to defend yourself or do something in the meantime while waiting for the bomb to explode. Remember also not to accidentally bomb jump if you do not want to as this can cause serious problems. To extend your bomb jump, you can also lunge. Let's figure out a bomb's stats first. The pros of using a bomb include, amazing for takeovers, it's good for high rate damage, destroying buildings, and bomb jumping. The cons include, it's awful for close range combat, there's weak times in between, designating takes a while, and it's not very effective for combat, but rather strategic advantage. So is it a good weapon? No, I'd rather think it is a strategic stool to help use. <laughs> The classic ball, otherwise known as the super ball, works like a dodgeball. To use it, simply click. Super balls are most effective when your rendered distance is in your opponent's sight. When using a super ball, try and aim for the cross ball. Super balls also have a neat trick that if you hit your opponent, they'll go down for a couple seconds. When using a super ball, try to aim towards more of your opponent's head slash center, which will cause the most damage for your opponent. Super balls also make a good weapon as their quick reload times allow for an easier weapon to use. Marksman players can also enjoy the accuracy of this weapon as it has a very high accuracy if you target it right. The weapon can also be good used if you are jumping to avoid being hit by one yourself. It's also good in use in long range combat if you can't get that opponent. Overall, I'd say it has some great qualities to it and it is overall a great weapon. Let's view the stats for this weapon. The pros of using a ball or a super ball is that it's good for all ranges, it hinders the opposition, it has fast reload times, and it's easy to use. The cons of using a ball or a super ball is that it's bad for certain views such as first person, it doesn't do much damage, and it's only good in multiple attacks. So what's my final opinion on this weapon? I think it's a good weapon, but other than multiple attacks, it doesn't have much use as turns of takeover strategies. Let's get into our final thing, the truss. The truss is essentially one of the most odd things on the toolbar. Is it a weapon? Well, not really. It's more of a thing that places blocks, or it's good for trench fighting. As useless as it may seem, the truss is most important for creating bridges and bridge-like pathways. It's also important to avoiding death and getting to other bases. To use the truss, you can left click or you can tap on your screen to whichever place you'd like the truss to go to. As you can see, an outline appears when you have truss. The truss can be used good in trench fighting, essentially creating yourself cover for fires such as super balls, rockets, and more. However, after one hit will be knocked down, so it's good for temporary cover. Be careful when using a truss. There are multiple types of trusses. As seen here, I am using something called a bridge truss, which essentially makes a bridge-like formation and is good for crossing other sides. Let's now learn the stats of the truss. The pros of using a truss are is that it can create ground, and this ground is useful to getting to other bases, and it's good in trench warfare and cover. The cons are, 
There's no weaponized purpose to the truss, and the ground goes down in around one shot. On to our final point, which is my final thoughts, or my conclusion to all of these weapons. All of the weapons and tools are equally good in their own way, and I believe they should each be used for a singular purpose. In using all the weapons together, you will achieve the most effective strategy to win and dominate the game. It's all about equal use of these weapons. One weapon is not better than the other, despite the cons. Another key to getting good at Super Doom Fire or even any game is practice. It's all about practicing and learning what works best for you or other people. Thank you for watching my video. I'd appreciate if you subscribe. This marks the end of this video, but I hope you can stick around. If you want to watch another video, you can always go to my uploads playlist. See you guys in the next video, which is for approximately in a week. Peace out.